What if the most dangerous threat in the Pacific Northwest is not one you can see, not one that roars with lava fountains or darkens the sky with ash, but one that sleeps quietly beneath the slow melt of ancient ice? What if a mountain revered for its beauty, photographed endlessly for postcards and wedding backdrops, is also concealing a secret that only whispers in tremors too small for the average person to feel? And what if the key to its awakening is not fire, but water, the melting of glaciers that have covered its flanks for thousands of years? Mount Rainier, towering over the state of Washington at more than 4,300 metres, has always carried the dual identity of wonder and menace. To hikers and climbers, its snowfields are a place of pilgrimage. To geologists, it is among the most dangerous volcanoes in North America. But lately, a question has begun echoing more loudly. Could the vanishing of its glaciers, ice that once weighed the mountain down, sealing fractures and chilling its hydrothermal heart, be triggering movements beneath the surface that point to a hidden danger? In the summer of 2025, scientists detected something that reignited this question. A swarm of more than 1,000 small earthquakes shook beneath Rainier's summit, most between two and six kilometres, or roughly one to three and a half miles, deep. None of them were large enough to rattle houses in Tacoma or Seattle, yet their persistence unsettled experts. The biggest, barely magnitude 2.4, came on July 11th, hardly the type of quake that would make headlines. But in their sheer number and in their clustering, they formed a pattern that demanded attention. Was the mountain stirring? The U.S. Geological Survey's Cascades Volcano Observatory rushed to analyse the events. Their instruments, newly upgraded with 25 broadband seismic stations and a network of infrasound sensors, told a story not of magma rising, but of fluids moving through cracks. Hydrothermal water, superheated and pressurised, seemed to be shifting within the mountain. No plume of volcanic gases was detected, no telltale sulphur dioxide that would have screamed magma intrusion. The official conclusion was that this was a fluid-driven swarm, not the opening act of an eruption. Still, the timing felt ominous. For decades, every one of Rainier's 28 named glaciers has been shrinking. Paradise Glacier, Frying Pan, Ohana Pekosh and others are rapidly receding, some expected to vanish completely within five to ten years. The mountain, once described as an ice-clad giant, is shedding its armour. The weight of that ice, once estimated at more than four and a half cubic kilometres, presses down on the rock beneath. Remove it, and the stress field changes. Rock fractures can slip, faults can awaken. Magma, previously trapped by overlying pressure, can rise more freely. Could it be that as the glaciers retreat, the mountain is not just losing ice, but also losing its chains? Scientists have seen this pattern elsewhere. In Iceland, when glaciers receded, volcanic activity followed. In Alaska, as ice thinned, seismicity increased. Even in the Andes, retreating glaciers were linked to volcanic unrest. If it can happen there, why not here? Rainier, after all, is not dormant. It is an active stratovolcano with a history of eruptions and collapses. Its last major eruption may have been centuries ago, but geologically speaking, that is yesterday. Hydrologists raise another point, the meltwater. Every summer, torrents of glacial runoff rush down the mountain, feeding rivers like the Nisqually and the Puyallup. But not all of that water stays on the surface. Some of it seeps into cracks, percolating deep into the hydrothermal system. Water under pressure can act like a wedge, prying open faults, lubricating fractures, and triggering quakes. In July of 2025, when the swarm began, meltwater flows were at their peak. Coincidence, or part of the story? 
If the swarms are linked to glacial melt, then the stakes grow higher, because the glaciers are not coming back. Their retreat is accelerating. Each passing summer exposes more bedrock, destabilizes more slopes, and pours more water into the mountain's hidden veins. The possibility that the very loss of ice could be reshaping the subterranean architecture of Rainier is both fascinating and terrifying. But what if this is not just about earthquakes? What if the melting of glaciers is setting the stage for something else, something more catastrophic, yet far quieter in its build-up? Rainier is notorious not only for its potential eruptions, but also for its lahars, volcanic mudflows capable of racing down valleys at highway speeds, burying towns in meters of debris. The last time Rainier produced a major lahar, it reshaped the Puyallup Valley, carving landscapes that still bear its signature. Imagine one of those unleashed not by an eruption, but by a sudden collapse of ice-laden slopes weakened by melt. Communities in Orting, Sumner, and Puyallup sit squarely in these lahar paths. They practice evacuation drills, aware that sirens may one day sound with only minutes to flee. The lahar detection system, recently upgraded with infrasound sensors and real-time seismic monitoring, may give them warning. But can it outpace the speed of disaster if an unstable slope fails in the dark of night? As the swarm faded in late August, officials reassured the public. No sign of magma, no eruption imminent. Life returned to normal. Yet beneath the calm statements was a quiet recognition. Something is changing. Rainier's glaciers, once seen as shields, may be turning into triggers. Their disappearance could destabilize slopes, reroute water, change pressures in the crust, and open pathways no one fully understands. The mountain has not erupted in centuries, but silence does not mean safety. And so the mystery deepens. Are we witnessing the first hints of a new chapter in Rainier's geologic story? Could climate change, by stripping ice, be awakening forces once held in check? Or is this merely the mountain sighing, releasing pressure through harmless swarms of tiny quakes? Scientists search for answers in seismic waves, in gas emissions, in satellite images of retreating glaciers. But for now, the public is left with questions. What happens when the ice is gone? What happens when the weight of four and a half cubic kilometers of glacier is lifted off a volcano long known as a sleeping giant? What if water, not magma, is the key to unlocking its next eruption? The answers may not come quickly. They may arrive not with spectacle, but with silence, not with eruption, but with a whisper beneath the ice. And that whisper may be growing louder. In late summer, when the last alpen glow fades from the peak of Mount Rainier, the mountain appears serene, almost eternal. From the shores of Puget Sound, it rises in the distance like a vision a colossal sentinel of the Cascades. But beneath that calm profile lies an uneasy truth. The disappearance of glaciers may be shifting the balance of forces inside the volcano in ways that scientists are only beginning to comprehend. The most unsettling realization is that Rainier's greatest danger may not arrive as a dramatic eruption at all but rather as a cascading series of smaller failures set into motion by melting ice. Geologists point to the slopes near the summit, riddled with fractured and hydrothermally altered rock. For decades, glaciers have helped hold those slopes together, their frozen grip reinforcing cliffs that would otherwise crumble. But as the ice retreats, those slopes are left exposed and weakened, vulnerable. To collapse. A sudden release of millions of tons of unstable rock combined with meltwater could unleash a lahar of astonishing size, 
one that would roar down river valleys at speeds exceeding 100 kilometers per hour or more than 60 miles per hour, overwhelming everything in its path. Consider the town of Orting, home to over 8,000 residents nestled in the shadow of Rainier where two rivers converge. Evacuation drills remind its people that they may have as little as 30 minutes to escape once sirens sound. High ground is marked with signs. School children practice the route. And yet, in the face of a laha the size geologists envision, even 30 minutes might prove generous. Would everyone make it out? Would the detection systems, sensitive to seismic rumblings and infrasound waves, provide enough notice? Or would the failure of a slope weakened by glacial loss strike without warning, giving only seconds before mud and debris thundered through the valley? The risk extends far beyond orting. Sumner, Puyallup, Fife, even the industrial heart of Tacoma sit in zones identified as Laha pathways. The Puyallup River Valley, home to warehouses, farms and highways, was built on ancient Laha deposits. The soil itself is testimony to the mountain's violent past. And that past is not as distant as many assume. About 500 years ago, the electron mud flow swept through what is now the town of Orting, burying the landscape beneath meters of debris. Another, the Osceola mud flow, more than 5,000 years ago, was one of the largest known volcanic landslides in world history, reaching all the way to Puget Sound. If such events happened before, they can happen again. The swarms of earthquakes recorded in the summer of 2025 were not enough to suggest magma was on the move. But their depth and character, clustered between two and six kilometers below the surface, hint at a complex interplay of fluids, fractures and pressures. Glacial meltwater, sinking through newly exposed bedrock, may be feeding the hydrothermal system, heating, expanding, and creating pockets of instability. To scientists, the concern is not so much what has already happened, but what it might foreshadow. If fluids can migrate, then so can magma. If small collapses can occur, larger ones can follow. And if the mountain is losing its icy armour at accelerating rates, then the clock may be ticking faster than anyone imagined. The numbers paint a stark picture. Since the mid-20th century, Rainier's glaciers have lost nearly one-third of their volume. Some, like the South Tahoma Glacier, have produced repeated outburst floods in recent years, sudden torrents of water and debris rushing down valleys without volcanic eruption to trigger them. Each event is a reminder that ice alone can unleash destruction. Each retreating glacier adds to the uncertainty. Climate scientists warn that warming trends in the Pacific Northwest will only accelerate this process. Hotter summers, less persistent snowpack, and longer melt seasons are stripping the mountain faster than models once predicted. Paradise Glacier, once a destination for climbers in the early 20th century, has shrunk to a fraction of its size and may vanish within the coming decade. The loss is not just aesthetic. It is a destabilization of the entire volcanic edifice. The human factor deepens the peril. Nearly four million people live within striking distance of Rainier's hazards. Seattle, though not in direct Lahar paths, would suffer catastrophic disruption if transportation corridors and ports in Tacoma and the Puyallup Valley were buried. The regional economy, already intertwined with global trade, could face billions of dollars in damage. Emergency planners run scenarios, but scenarios cannot capture the panic of a midnight siren, the gridlock of cars streaming toward high ground, or the heartbreak of communities cut off from rescue. The scientific community continues to emphasize caution. They remind the public that seismic swarms are common, that most do not lead to eruptions, and that monitoring systems are stronger than ever before. 
and yet they also admit the limits of their knowledge. The connection between glacial loss and volcanic unrest is still being mapped. No instrument can predict the precise moment when pressure will reach its breaking point. What they do know is this. The conditions that could make Rainier more unstable are accelerating, not slowing. For many residents of Washington, the danger remains abstract until smoke rises or ground shakes. But the story of Rainier is not one of if, but when. History has already written chapters of colossal mud flows, of sudden collapses, of rivers transformed overnight. The question now is how the disappearance of glaciers, a process unfolding before our eyes, will shape the next chapter. And perhaps there is a deeper irony here. The very force reshaping the planet through climate change, the warming driven by human industry, may be awakening a threat that has slept for centuries. The melting glaciers of Rainier are not just casualties of climate. They may be catalysts of catastrophe. Ice and fire, locked in delicate balance for millennia, are tipping toward rupture. So when the next swarm rattles beneath the mountain, when the next flood bursts from a melting glacier, or when the next slope gives way in a roar of rock and mud, the signs will not be isolated events. They will be part of a larger story, one in which humans, knowingly or not, have tilted the scales. In the end, Mount Rainier remains both magnificent and menacing, a paradox of beauty and danger. Its silence is deceptive. Its glaciers, once symbols of permanence, are vanishing. And with each vanishing, the hidden systems beneath grow more restless. Perhaps the most haunting question is not whether the mountain will erupt, but whether the melting of its glaciers has already begun to awaken forces that cannot be stopped. When that day comes, whether it is decades away or sooner than anyone dares to admit, the people of the Pacific Northwest will look back at the summer of 2025, at the swarm of tiny quakes beneath the summit, and wonder, was that the first whisper of a giant rising? If you found this investigation compelling, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And most importantly, tap that hype icon to help this video reach a wiser audience that deserves to know what lies beneath the silence of Mount Rainier.